Shalom family. Shalom had a little problem connecting on StreamYard. Um, what we're going to do is talk about Kim Potter. She testified, which I don't think is ever a good thing to do when you're a murderer <laughs> to get your butt up on the stand and testify. Not a good idea. And but I tell you what, they must have all passed a memo on crying on the stand. If you notice, we've been seeing a lot of crying in court with these folks more than I've ever seen before in the past. They, they must have sent the memo around. I guess when I feared for my life don't work and you end up in court, you better start crying. Try to jerk on some sympathy, I suppose. But I was not moved by Kim Potter's tears. I was not moved by Amber Geiger's tears. I was not moved by Travis McMichael's tears. Their tears don't move me. You know, because look at all the evil you did in taking out somebody's life. Now, I did a story on one of the cops that she was training. He said that situation didn't spiral out of control until Kim Potter came up and she just got everything out of control. But they said prior to her walking up, they had Dante right under control. He was very cooperative. He was answering them when they were asking him questions. She turned that situation up when she came over there all hostile. And when he got in that car, y'all, he was just trying to save himself. He was trying to get away from that situation that he didn't feel safe in. But you know, any action that we do, even trying to save ourselves, they'll say it's resisting arrest, despite the fact that we see white people fighting cops, white people cussing cops out, white people spitting on cops. We done seen it all, right? They never label any of those things resisting arrest. None of that's resisting arrest, but anytime a black man sees a situation as dangerous and he's just trying to get away from it, that's called resisting arrest. How you doing, LVZ? True Royal? Yeah, you know, it's always different when it's us. When when they do all kinds of actions around cops, none of that's resisting, okay? In fact, the word resisting don't even come up. So let's just look at a clipping because, you know, it, it was quite long. There are some news stations that have like over an hour or even five hours of the trial. I, I, I definitely cannot see them. I can't show five hours. That's, that's ridiculous. But I'm going to show you a clipping of Kim Potter on the stand. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen and then we'll talk a little more about this. All right, y'all, if you can see the screen, please give me a one. Always want to make sure y'all can see everything before I get started. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. Let's see how we can do this. All right, here we go. All right, so Kim Potter decided to take the stand in her own defense. And in my opinion, she didn't do so well. You know, just like Travis McMichael, he took the stand and he just did horribly. Sometimes when you got somebody that killed another person and you put them on the stand, I think they pretty much do themselves in by just bad testimony. They just, you know, and that's how I see Kim Potter. But let's go ahead and I'm going to play this um, clipping for you. Come on now. I'm 
might have to refresh this thing. Well, today in Minnesota, former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter took the stand in her own defense, emotionally recalling the moments that she meant to pull her taser, but instead fired her gun at Dante Wright during a traffic stop. Jennifer Mayer Lee from our CBS station in Minneapolis is covering the trial. <laughs> that was so sorry. Kim Potter sobbed as she described what happened at the traffic stop that ended with Dante Wright's death. I remember yelling, taser, 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 and nothing happened. And then he told me I shot him. <laughs> Potter's defense insists she made a deadly mistake. Yes. Pulling her Glock pistol when she thought she was grabbing a taser and then firing a single bullet into Wright's chest. The defense says Wright was resisting arrest and about to drive off, and Potter had to do something to protect the other two two officers involved. Under cross-examination broke down when the prosecution asked why she didn't try to help either Wright after the shooting. You didn't run down the street and try to save his life, did you? No. You were focused on what you had done because you had just killed somebody. I'm sorry it happened. <laughs> Body camera video captured Potter's reaction in the moments after the shooting. She was grilled about her extensive training on firearms and tasers. Over the 26 years, she was an officer. You would have had taser training year after year for at least the last 19 years, right? Yes. And the prosecutor tried to poke holes into the defense case that Potter was justified with using deadly force. You didn't plan to use deadly force that day, did you? <laughs> no. Because you knew that deadly force was unreasonable and unwarranted in this circumstance. And I didn't want to hurt anybody. <laughs> Potter testified that she never fired her weapon or used her taser during her nearly three decades on the force. The jury will hear closing arguments on Monday. Nora? Jennifer Mayerly, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now, look. Dante, when he was first stopped, he was stopped by a black cop and it was a cop that Kim Potter was training. He said he was calm. The He was talking back and forth with this officer. In fact, I did a video on him. When he took the stand, he said, um, Kim Potter, what she did was unreasonable. She should not have killed Dante Wright. He was posing no threat. He was not a danger to the cops that were handling him. But what led to Dante jumping in that car was the way Kim went over there. She went turning everything up. That man was not resisting arrest. He was trying to save himself when he drove off in that car. He knew something was about to happen just by the way she went over there and turned everything up. It went from zero to a hundred within seconds. And we have seen cops like Kim Potter do this repeatedly in these stops. It may be everybody is calm until the cop shows up and then everything turns up. Okay, so no, her tears meant absolutely nothing as far as I'm concerned. And I really don't believe her testimony did any good as far as she definitely should be sentenced, in my opinion. I don't care nothing about her tears. Now, what else was he supposed to do? Just stand there and let her just shoot him down? He was trying to save himself. But, you know, anything that we do is always resisting in their eyes. So <clears throat> she did what Amber Geiger did after she shot him. She didn't do anything to try to save him. She could have went to where he stopped. He didn't stop far away from where he got shot. She could have went to him and tried to do CPR, try to stop the bleeding, 
Thank you, Esau Edom, for the super chat. Um, thank you for all that you do for the Most High and his children. We appreciate you. Big Judah, Big Levi, Abdullah Shear, uh, Ayol, and every other child of the Most High who was doing their best to awake and guide uh, his children during these times. All praises to the Most High. Thank you very much. And thank you for that comment. Um, <clears throat> so when do we get to save ourselves from a situation like that? He, he had no way once she pulled that trigger, he couldn't even, what could he do? You know, can you imagine feeling yourself die? He had to feel that behind the wheels. He had to feel that. You know, and, and even his girlfriend, she testified really in the very beginning of the trial when it first started. And, and she said there was no reason for her to shoot and kill Dante like that. And I mean, even her being all over the ground, that that's just that same Amber Geiger hysteria that we saw after she shot both of them. She's on the 911 call, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my apartment. How about saving both of them or at least try to save them? No, you you on the phone with 911 trying to save yourself. And that's exactly what Kim Potter did. She fell all over the ground, getting all hysterical, trying to save herself. Instead of trying to save the victim that you just shot. She like like the, the lawyer said she could have went to him and tried to save him. She didn't do nothing. No, you know what? It, it's just like we said before. When they shoot one of us unarmed, they're hoping that you'll just bleed out, and you won't be able to give a testimony at all. You know, we have seen this scenario so many damn times. It's not even funny. It's not funny. When those cops had the handcuffs on him and they were just talking to him, she should have just left the situation alone. But they just simply can't help themselves. When they spot a black man, they just got to come over and do some off the cuff mess that will always lead to the death of that person. You know, yeah, um, D. Collins, there was a second incident and she was also training. And before she pulled the trigger, she said, um, turn the cameras off. And she did get away with that one. She got away with that completely. And to be honest with you, they need to reopen that case, especially if they find her guilty of what she did to Dante Wright, that other case where she did a similar thing, that needs to be reopened, period. The fact that she stood there screaming, taser, 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 tells me she was doing that for the cameras, y'all. She was doing that for the, just in case this stuff ends up in court. You ever wonder why when many of these police officers show up on the scene, they just go to yelling at a high pitch. They just screaming and screaming. That's for the courts. That's why they're doing that. Get on the ground. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. That's for court. That's for court. That's why they're doing all of that. And uh, sometimes they're yelling things out that you're not even doing. You're laying on the ground and you're not moving and they're standing over you screaming, stop resisting, stop resisting. That's for court. That's the only reason why they're doing that mess. It's for court. And see, the people that look just like them will watch that in court and hear all that screaming and yelling and just go right along with the cop. It's psychological warfare. That's what it is. It's psychological warfare. But no, I, I don't feel bad for her. If you remember, Amber Geiger was doing all that crying and, and all that hysteria stuff too. It, this is just what they do. 
it, it, this is just what they do. She's on that stand trying to save herself. She couldn't use, I feared for my life. She couldn't use that. So now she's trying to use her tears to get out of everything. Yeah, but you know what? It, it, it's a good thing that so many of those officers had cam, you know, their body cams on and the dash cam on the other cop cars because ultimately she could have told a whole different story back in the day before everybody had phones and everything. She could have told a story and, and clearly got away with everything. I bet you prior to us being able to film these things, these cops probably got away with thousands and thousands of murders. And I'm, I'm probably under exaggerating thousands of murders because there was no camera around. And you, you don't know how many got taken out execution style. And I really believe that what, that's what Kim Potter did. She executed Dante Wright. She shot him in the chest at close range. You know, I always remember what these cops came out of. They came out of slave patrol. You can't take something negative and then make it positive. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So y'all, I'm not going to hold you up any longer. I just wanted y'all to see how she couldn't even hold her composure on the stand. And, you know, Dante can't even come back to cry. She took all of that away from him. He can't even come back and do that. To hell with her tears. To hell with that. For real. All right, y'all. You know what to do. Leave your comments and we'll come back and do this again. Uh, I have a premiere coming up around two o'clock today. So if you can all be there, I will see you over there. I will see you over there, family. Shalom.